the newest episode of Teen Wolf TV Time with me. Today's episode is called Weaponized, and for good reason, because we have gone from, like, just regular guns to actual full-blown bioterrorism. So that's really up in the ante to get these names off the list. So at first, I thought that Siri might have been the benefactor because that robot voice reading that, uh, that script of instructions was kind of cryptic. It was kind of like my male Siri when he's like, sorry, Jared, I can't do anything for you right now. I don't know, Siri might be trying to kill me. Keep an eye out, guys. It doesn't really take a rocket scientist to realize that Styles is kind of considering keeping the money because kind of maybe both your parents are going to foreclose on their homes and lose all of their worldly possessions because you guys have a very expensive hobby. You know what that hobby is? Lycanthropy. Lycanthropy is not something that comes cheap. That is a luxury for the rich. Just ask Derek. He has 117 million and he's been a werewolf his whole life just brooding and just buying stuff. Melissa and the sheriff cannot afford that. So maybe we should take up something a little less dangerous, like Bridge. Yeah, Bridge. Or Bunko. And now Derek's all gun ho to save the soldier. I already told you I'm a Steric shipper, but Derek and Sister Soldier, I can grin and bear that one. I can suck it up, because Sister Soldier's awesome and Derek's awesome. So them together might be awesome. And maybe she won't like screw him over and try and kill him, but his track record for that isn't really that great. Isn't that how we should all start saying hello with like an impromptu sparring battle? Like obviously Satomi knew that that was Deaton and Deaton well probably didn't know that was her considering she rolled up on him from behind but like who just does that? Just like hey let me punch you in the face real quick that's how we say hello. That's how we greet friends. I guess there's some people out there to do that like if you're in a fight club or something but you know no one knows because you can't talk about fight club so Whatever. And if we weren't all stressed enough, Styles has become a grammar Nazi. People say that Styles. It's like a phonetically. No. People say that Styles. It's like a colloquialism at this point. Like you say, I'm like I don't do stuff good. Not that many people say well. I say well, but I'm a writer and like I do this kind of stuff, so I should probably know how to talk. But people like Malia, who have been coyotes for thirty thousand years, don't know the basics of grammar. I bet she uses the wrong forms of their. T-H-E-I-R-T-H-E-R-E-T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. I bet she gets them all jumbled up because she's a little bit dumb. I think it's just funny, like, as an outsider looking in at them take this PSAT because it's like, they're all 25. And on a school note, they are taking it on a Saturday. Our PSAT was always built into, like, school time, so we didn't have to come in on a day off to take that. I love how Miss Martin just looked at that girl like, did this bitch really just faint? You got the herp or something? Like, are you having an outbreak, girl? Like, why are you on the ground? Why are you festering? Mmm, I'ma need you to get some Purell stats, Miss Martin, cause that looks like that catches. Spoiler alert, it catches. Okay, so I know on the show it's probably still like 2012 through like 2013, but she just called information to get the number to the CDC. Like, she couldn't have asked Siri. She couldn't have just Googled it. She poop information, Miss Martin. You might as well have a flip phone. A razor flip phone at that. Okay, little girl. I know that going to college is very important and the fact that your parents don't have money to send you to college is also important. But you can't go to college if you're dead. You currently have a like flesh-eating bacterial virus and you're worried about college. I'ma need you to get your priorities together. Because, as I said, if you're dead, there is no college. So, the fact that you are being quarantined in a plastic bubble is probably good for your future as a whole. Your PSAT scores will be okay. I'm sure this counts as like one of those circumstances where they have to restart the test and you'll be fine. If during my actual SAT, somebody pulled the fire alarm and we didn't have to start over, I think you're gonna be fine. You're gonna, you're gonna make it. This Dr. Frankenstein looking dude is acting hella shady right now. Like, I can't with the way he's just like, yeah, we're in quarantine and it's just fine. I don't think he was British, but like in my head just now, he was British and like what came out was like a British light accent. I don't know what it was. It wasn't super British, but I, I tried. Hell. If we're going the sudden blindness route, somebody needs to like dig Deucalion up out of cryo sleep and ask him like what to do. Like use the Alpha Vision. Scott uses the Alpha Vision at some point, but like 
we should have probably, like, I don't know. Maybe Deucalion should have taught a class or something on how to survive blindness before he disappeared. He's not dead, right? I'm pretty sure he's not dead. Because I'm pretty sure people are mad that Miss Blake died and Deucalion got to live. Yeah, that's true. That's canon. Deucalion's alive, so they should have asked him. They should have found him. Shot him a text. Oh, he that, that was in bad taste. I didn't mean that. At this point, they need to just give Melissa the medical degree because she has solved so many, like, murder homicides. She has stitched so many wounds. Like, they are literally going to cut into a person's skull. Like, this is going beyond the scope of RN right now. Like, registered nurse, this is too much. We need to give Melissa the pay raise that she deserves as well as the documentation that says that she's authorized to do these things because she has just proven it in the field. Like, they need to do like what they do with celebrities and give her like an honorary degree because she has earned it. So, is no one concerned that Lydia is spending a creepy amount of time alone in a room with a record player? Like, she's not even listening to the Beatles. She's listening to nothing. She is like, having a seance with herself to talk to Meredith, who's like freshly dead. I don't know if her banshee powers can like pull a fresh spirit back to chat with them. Spoiler alert, it totally doesn't work. But like, she's trying and it's kind of sad to see her doubt herself after she was the one who kind of pushed Meredith into that nervous breakdown. I'm not pointing any fingers because y'all know I love Lydia, but if blame has to be laid at someone's feet, it's gonna be at Lydia and her booties that she wears every episode. I'm sorry, I love you girl, but dims is facts. That aside, that's the sound of my heart breaking. Even though Lydia was mean, I don't want her to like be down on herself because they need her to be strong. Just when I started to like Malia, she takes 15 steps backwards. Like I hate in these shows where people are like, oh my God, I deserve to know stuff. Actually, you know what? Sometimes keeping secrets is good. Malia, you don't need to know that Peter's your dad. You don't need to know why they're hiding money under their bed. Like that doesn't concern you. Melissa and the sheriff going broke does not concern you. The fact that you don't know who your real dad is really doesn't concern you either because either way you lived your life without a father. So what difference does it make if Crazy Peter is your dad or Crazy Guy who like lived with the bear traps is your dad? What difference does it make? You don't talk to them. You don't live with them. I don't know where she's living, actually. Where does Malia sleep when she's not at the foot of Styles' bed like a little dog? Like, where does she sleep? Hmm. Hmm. We should look into that. Well, Kira's electric personality really gave a shock to that little CDC lady. Knee slapper. Ha! Ah! I apologize, that joke was actually terrible. I feel like y'all are reacting to me the way that that CDC lady reacted to Scott's dad after she got shocked. Like, really, please leave me alone. Clearly I'm having some struggles. I don't wanna talk to you right now. Okay, so if we're looking for a place to hide the werewolves to keep them from transforming or like tearing stuff up. Why not just stuff them in some lockers? Stuff them in a locker and like put the little lock on. Those uh, school lockers are made of st steel and they will not open. Like that's just a suggestion. Just shove them in and just leave them there. Put some mountain ash at the front. I'm sure at this point Styles keeps some like in his backpack. Just stuff them in and leave them there. They'll be fine. No? We don't like that plan? Well, I tried. I'm trying to help y'all and y'all just don't want to listen. Malia is a ruthless bitch. She's like, y'all are worth more than me on that list. So y'all will probably die before me. Like, really, girl? Really? It's true, but like, you ain't have to say that. Like, it's one of those moments where it's like, you were thinking it. Oh, but you said it. I was thinking it and she said it. Seriously though, Melissa doesn't get paid enough for the stuff that she has to deal with. Like really, stop bringing her special cases. She has enough humans to deal with. And y'all are trying to make her deal with like supernatural stuff. Like really, if y'all are not gonna start paying her with like gold doubloons or something supernatural, like I don't know, the shillings from the leprechaun, y'all need to leave her alone. Like throw some Mario coins at her feet. Like she has bills to pay and she has to like do rounds. So she can't get paid to be like stitching up werewolves and stuff. No. Leave her alone or pay her. Show her that money or leave her alone. That's all I'm saying. 
And Styles still has that axe to grind from Peter from season one. Like, oh my god, you can't trust him. I mean, you can't trust him, but he's like been useful lately ish, sort of. But you can't just. <sighs> Forgiveness is key, Styles. Like, you just need to let it go. He didn't really. He didn't kill you. He didn't make you go crazy. If anybody should be holding a grudge is Lydia. You can kind of let it go, because he wasn't really, like, your battle anyways. I'm just saying. I will give Dr. Frankenstein this one thing. It was very smart of him to use bioterrorism to, like, clear out half of that list. The Deadpool is, like, pretty much over had he succeeded, because he got, like, the top three people on that list with his poison. And then, like... You have to be impressed at the fact that he beta tested it on like some some knockoff wolves first before he decided to implement this into the um, ventilation system or into those like that that ink stuff whatever whatever yeah it's the ink that made them go crazy so you have to give him props for that I'll give him props for that if you won't I'll do it I can appreciate an evil genius. I feel like this is supposed to be like a tender moment between Malia and Styles, but I only find myself gagging and not in a good way. Not like, yeah, if I'm gagging. No, I was just like gagging, like retching, like I'm gonna vomit because they're gross. And as much as I want to be on the ship with Sister Soldier and Derek, like, it's developing really weird. Like, he's strangely attached to her again, and they've had like two or three interactions on screen. I, I don't like when they do stuff like that. That's how I felt about Derek and Miss Blake. I didn't like it. Talia Hale is starting to seem a little bit like a hoarder because they like hoard money in the vault, like creepy weird tea and shiitake mushrooms. And mm, maybe we need to give that place a good scrub because it's just seeming like dusty old things are living now in that vault. I mean, I guess that's technically what a vault is for, but you know what I mean. Like, give it, give it up. She's dead. Clean this stuff out. You're holding on to it. No, you don't need it. The money, yes, keep. But like the shiitake mushrooms, you can technically get rid of those even though they kind of saved your life this episode. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of keeping things from the dead. Maybe one or two trinkets, but like a whole like a whole hovel full of like random stuff and things. You could probably get rid of that. I'm just saying. Y'all are looking hella crackish right now. Okay, so how was everybody just magically healed now? Like I know they figured out that the tea was like how you save the werewolves, but like the humans are just like, oh snap, I had a rough night. I had too much to drink. I shouldn't have popped that molly and sweated. I'm just, I'm good now though. Like, can we finish the test? I, I don't get it. Like, I feel like that needed to be better explained or I blinked and I missed something. Maybe it just runs a, like a short course in humans or, <sighs> I don't know. Maybe somebody can explain it to me in a comment if I ask nice. Wow, wasn't ready for Agent McCall to go dead in the forehead with uh, Dr. Frankenstein. I mean, obviously he had it coming because he's gonna shoot Styles, but like, I just wasn't ready for that death. And I'm gonna need Styles to grab like a napkin or a wet one on his way back to the vault to clean the blood off his face because that's how people get hepatitis. If there was ever a time to use Alpha Vision, I guess it's now, because you gotta get the shiitake mushrooms and save yourselves. Oh no, Malia's pressed because she knows her name is Malia Hale. Oh my god, who are you? She, like, I don't even understand why she's mad, because that doesn't necessarily lead straight to Peter. There are a lot of Hales in Beacon Hills. That could be, like, a cousin or something. You don't know. You are just being presumptuous because you want to be mad. Stir yourself up in those feelings, girl. Nobody cares. Someone cares. Just not me. Well, that's all the time that I have for you today. I will see you all next week, same time, same place, right here in my bed. I'm looking forward to it. Have a good week, y'all. See you later. Make sure to check out The Collective because I will be posting my Alpha 5 for this episode as well. So check that out. It's always fun to watch both things. We'll read one, watch the other. They typically kind of coincide, but whatever I'm babbling, just watch it. Watch this and then read that because you love me and I love you. Bye.